Journey IFC strives to create safe spaces to worship God. Know that you are welcome just as you are, regardless of religious background or lack thereof, skin color, political affiliation, sexuality, age, culture, or any other label you own or society throws on you. You are welcomed and celebrated here just as you are. Good morning, everyone. I'm <clears throat> glad to see you here. I'm going to light a candle. If you have a candle at your house, feel free to light it. Um, this is just a reminder of God's spirit being in this space, even virtually in all of our different spaces right now. And we are on Zoom, so we'll run over a couple of Zoom reminders. Um, if you're not <clears throat> talking, have it muted just so that we don't hear you or we're not disrupting each other. Um, but if you do want to say something, you can also feel free to chat in. You can unmute and interrupt. That is okay. This is Journey. That's how we do things. Um, you can also put stuff in the chat if you have any questions um, and we can help. You can also put prayers, thoughts, anything in there. That is a free space to do what you want with. But first, I want to say welcome. Welcome to our gathering. It is so nice to see you. I can see most of your faces. Some of you, I just see your name, but that is okay. I'm glad to see your name too. Um, I'm so happy to be with y'all here today. Today is the last day in our Beyond or Mind the Gap series, and today we're going to talk about Beyond the Gap. What do we do when we get to the end of this gap and look forward? Um, and this has been a weird gap. We've been waiting since Christmas. We've been online, and I know I am not the biggest fan of being online. It has been a great thing to, to do in this gap period, but I am eager to be back in person. So as of Wednesday, we will be back in person. Wednesday, we're having our Ash Wednesday service. It's come and go um, whenever you feel like it. Uh, there'll be some meditation space and we'll be have an activity you can do. Um, so plan about 15 minutes if you do come. Um, you can come anytime from 10 to 2 and 5 to 7 on this Wednesday. And then next Sunday, we will be in person. If you still want to stay online, that is okay. We understand that. Uh, we will still have our, all of our hybrid stuff. Um, and hopefully we'll have some new camera stuff going on if we can get that uh, worked out quick enough. But we'll see, wherever the spirit takes us, I guess. I also want to say some things in light of this week. It's been a heavy week um, in the world. Um, I think everything that's happening between Russia and Ukraine is just weighing heavy on everyone. Um, and there's discussions of peace talks and, and there's all of these images of people fighting for the place they live and fighting each other. And, and it can get so overwhelming and dark to see these things. Um, but I'm always reminded by Mr. Rogers quote about, you know, look for the helpers. And so that's what I've been trying to do this week is in, in this heavy space is try to look for the places where God is shining through. Um, and I think we are called to be a light in this dark place. Another big thing that happened this week in Texas um, with trans kids is this legislation or I don't, what, I don't even know what to call it, but all this stuff around um, trying to get people in trouble for affirming their child's gender, whatever that is, through different means. Um, I want to hold all of the parents who are dealing with this in our hearts um, because all the parents I know that are helping their kids make these decisions are doing it very thoughtfully and with a lot of love. Um, and so I want to say, me as an individual, and I hope Journey as a collective um, can say that that is not okay, and that's not something we support. Um, but I wanted to hold that in this space today, um, because we don't come here and leave the world behind us. We come here and we bring the world with us. Um, and so I pray that we can be a light that can go out in the world and shine a little bit of Journey um, in these dark spaces. So let's open with prayer. So let's take a deep breath in and out. God, I pray that you can center us in this moment. I pray that all the thoughts and things around us that can often distract can, can be set aside for a couple of moments so that we can be present with one another. God, I thank you for this community that's willing to meet online to keep each other safe. And I thank you for this time that although frustrating and, and disjointed in many ways was still connected because of things like Zoom and, and internet and email, 
God, I thank you for keeping us connected in this gap. God, I pray as we, we end this series and we go into this season called Lent, I pray that it can be a time of self-reflection, a time to, to journey inward. And God, I pray that work can start today. But for now, help us be present. And God, bless all of these wonderful people here on Zoom and all the people that watch later in the week. And God, bless this time together. Amen. Today's reading is from Acts. Yet another Jesus story out of Acts. Here we go. And After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us around it. Paul had gathered a bundle of fresh wood and was putting it on the fire when a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, this man must be a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were expecting him to swell up or drop dead, but after they had waited a long time and saw that nothing unusual had happened to him, they changed their minds and began to say that he was a god. Now, in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the leading man of the island, named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It so happened that the father of Publius lay sick in bed with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. After this happened, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They bestowed many honors on us, and when we were about to sail, they put on board all the provisions we needed. Thank you, Margaret, for that reading. <clears throat> so we have officially survived this gap period between Christmas and Lent, which starts on this Wednesday. So coming up on Wednesday, we'll celebrate Ash Wednesday. Um, and this is a marker of a new season in the church. Um, and it even is a marker that will be back in person finally after many weeks of being online. So we've done it, we've survived this online gap. So what I wanna to do today is to look back on this series. We're ending a series today. So I wanna look at back at what we've covered and, and then, then we'll dive into this story for day, today a little bit more. So in our Mind the Gap series, as we've called it, we started with Epiphany, sort of. So that was when Gail talked about the Magi following the star and trusting God and these gaps between seeing the star when it, when it was in the sky and when it wasn't. And, and then we, we kind of took the, the idea that even when we can't see God, God can see us in these moments. Even when we can't see that star, God is still guiding us and is with us in that space. And so then the next week, we, we went to Jesus's baptism. It was the Sunday when the church universal remembers Jesus's baptism. And so we pondered on whether Jesus knew what he was being called to or not. And so in this baptism, we, we talked about the story from Lamb, the book that I had read over the break. And it's this ridiculous telling where he is baptized. And when he goes underwater, he gets water in his ears and he doesn't hear the blessing that God says that this is my son, my beloved with who I'm well pleased. And so when he comes up, he still doesn't know what he's called to. So we also ask what it means to be called ourselves when I, especially when we're stuck in these gap spaces and we have water in our ears and we cannot hear any direction from God. So then we moved into the book of Acts the next week and, and we talked about mending the gaps that are in our lives. And so we looked at the story of Peter and Cornelius, Peter being, you know, a Jew, Cornelius being a Roman guard at the time. And Peter has this strange dream when he's really hungry where this sheet full of animals falls from the sky. And, and he knows that these are unclean animals, but, but this angelic, this divine whatever voice says that these are not unclean. You cannot call unclean what God has gifted to, to you. And so we learn a little bit more about this dream when this, this Roman comes, Cornelius, he shows up and he's directed by God to go and find Peter and learn from him. And so we learned that this dream was about more than getting to eat new foods. It's not just about what's kosher and what's not kosher. 
It's actually about not calling unclean any gift that God gives us, including people who are different from us. You know, this whole Jew Gentile thing going on. All people are a gift and no one is unclean in this story. And then our next week, we, we, talked, we talked about how God and even us as humans can help each other in these gap spaces. And we talked about thresholds and being threshold tenders for one another. And in this story, we moved on to the story of Paul, whenever he is in prison for the work he's doing, the mission work he's doing, and, and an angel appears to him in the prison and, and frees him. And he goes through all of these layers and all these gates and past guards, and, and he gets through all these thresholds with God's help. But there's one final threshold, which is the door to the house of John Mark's mother. And he gets there and he knocks on the door and a young slave girl comes and answers the door, but she's so excited that she doesn't let him in. She runs and she tells the community that Paul is at the door and no one believes her. So we were reminded in this and we were challenged in this story to, to help each other cross these thresholds. Even, even in these periods when God's helping us cross th thresholds, there's still going to be points when we need one another. And sometimes we're even going to have to rely on someone like Rhoda, who's an enslaved young woman, to help us be liberated. And then the next week, we went further into the book of Acts, and we studied the story about Paul and Barnabas. They were going on mission work throughout you know, the world and spreading the word about Jesus, and they had had John Mark come with them. And he was a younger guy. He was a relative of Barnabas. <clears throat> And he had come on a mission before with him, and he had bowed out. He had to go home for some reason. We don't know why he went home, but he leaves the mission. And so when they're going on this next mission, Paul and Barnabas have this fight, and, and they disagree on whether John Mark should go or not. And so that week, we, we listened to John Mark, and, and John Mark reminded us that sometimes we have to enter th into these gaps of life alone, and sometimes we have to do stuff that is caring for ourselves and this may look like taking a journey alone and returning home a long journey away. But we realized that the story didn't end there because John, Mark, and Paul, they worked together later on in our scriptures. And so we're reminded that with some work, we can find ways to mend relationships, even if that means we have to take some time and, and part ways for a little bit. And then we took a gap in our series which is ironic, we took a gap in the Mind the Gap series. And, and we we'd had a conversation about reproductive justice and we talked about abortion. And we talked about how the church has helped and hurt this cause in many ways throughout time. Um, and we listened to each other and we cared for each other's stories. And there was a lot of grace and it was a beautiful week. And then after that week, we, we had our Valentine's Day Sunday. It was the, the day before Valentine's Day and we discussed Lydia. And she was a dealer in purple goods is what she was referred to as. And so Paul, he, he has this dream and he sees that there's this man in Macedonia who's pleading for help, who needs Paul to come and save him and fix his situation. And so Paul gets all of his people, they go to Macedonia. And when they get there, they can't find any needy man looking for them. Instead, they run into this self-sufficient wealthy woman who has her own household and an, an established faith already. She already is on this journey with God. And so they run into her and they realize this is who they were supposed to find. This story reminded us that sometimes in the gap, we find our way through unexpected means and unexpected people. We remembered that all we have is a blessing that we can share with one another, just like Lydia shared all of her blessings with others. We, and then sometimes we, we remember that sometimes getting through these gaps looks like receiving help. And we talked about how hard it is to receive help. I remember Julie Potts talking about that. Um, and I wrote that down on my notes and I've thought a lot about that since. And sometimes it's hard to receive this help because it's unexpected. And we think that we're the heroes and that we have to go in and save the day because that's what our dreams tell us. But sometimes in these gaps, we have to change our plans. And so then this past week, we talked about Paul's struggle with the law and how he was being bounced around to all these judges, trying to people trying to pin him down and get him imprisoned. And so he's being passed around all these places and he ends up on a ship, still imprisoned. And, and this dangerous storm comes in called the Northeastern and, and it nearly kills everyone, everyone on board. All like 200, I think 67 people are terrified. 
And, and in this moment when the waves are crashing on them and this, the wind is coming and, and they think they're going to die, Paul stops everyone for a moment and he shares a meal with them. They have this communal gathering on this boat and, and we remembered communion and when Jesus had communion and we shared communion together as a community here online. And after they shared this meal, everyone on board somehow made it safely to shore. But in the story, it took them giving up everything they had, the cargo, all of their equipment, and eventually it took them crashing the boat into a reef and riding these pieces of wood to shore to get to safety. It took letting go of old scripts, as we talked about it, and crashing to survive this gap and start anew. So now we come to our final week in this Mind the Gap series. So we look back and remember what this gap in particular has taught us. But now we have to move forward. We have to continue. And y'all don't want to hear me talk about gaps all this time. So we need to get to another theme. And so we're, we have to move forward and see what lies beyond this current gap. And so our story today picks up right back where we ended last week. Paul and the rest of these shipwreck survivors find themselves on an unknown shore. And they, they eventually meet people on this shore and they find out that this place where they have landed is called Malta, which is interesting. They probably actually knew Malta. This wasn't an unfamiliar place, but it was an unfamiliar shore. And they didn't know how they had gotten there. They had never approached it from this direction, but they end up on Malta barely alive after two weeks of suffering through a storm. And whenever they get there, the people they meet surprise them with kindness. And I can just imagine what a blessing that was after the horrors they had experienced for the past two weeks at sea in this northeastern storm. The people who lived there extend them care, and, and then they warm them up with a fire and so, Paul, I'm imagining needing some time alone after suffering through some crazy stuff for two weeks, offers to go and gather firewood. I imagine he took some time to decompress. He had just survived something pretty terrifying. So after a sigh of relief, I assume, Paul throws some wood on the fire. And at that moment, a snake drawn out by the warmth bites down on his hand. So Paul has finally survived this crazy boat experience, and now his life was yet again at stake. The people who show him kindness start speculating at this moment, because it's like, okay, he's just survived a shipwreck, now he's bit. So they start wondering, like, what were his crimes, and why is he imprisoned, and maybe he deserves to be bit by the snake, maybe he's this <clears throat> murderous person, and maybe he needed to do this, maybe this is justice. So he may have made it past this gap of this ship, but then he ends up on the shore. He doesn't even know if he can survive long enough to make it past this next one. But after he's bit, Paul just shakes the snake off into the fire, it says. And then everyone just kind of waits to see what will happen. So they wait and wait to see if this was going to be the thing that would finally do Paul in. Was Paul finally a goner after all he had made it through? And so they just kept waiting. But after they waited a while, nothing happened. And so the people did a 180. They changed their minds and they speculated that, oh, maybe he's not this murderous person. Maybe he's actually a god, which is really dangerous to, to make that sudden of a flip. But that's how quickly the story changes. Paul, shaken from a shipwreck and a snake bite and much more, all this legal stuff and all the missions he's been on, continues his work despite all of these setbacks. Paul learns that in this community, this neighborhood he's living in right now, there's a leading man <clears throat> on the island whose name is Publius or Publius, I don't know how we say that, but this man has been showing them hospitality. He's one of the people that probably helped start the fire. He's been giving them food and resources. And Paul learns that this man's father is sick and stuck in bed with fever and dysentery. And this, at this point in history, was a near death sentence. So Paul, who's currently recovering from a snake bite himself, decided to see if he could help this sick man. So Paul goes and he prays over this man and he places his snake-bitten hands on him. And this is a wild thing to do because this is deemed unclean and not okay. 
Paul does it, and this man is miraculously healed. The word soon spreads, as it often does in this, in this Acts narrative, about this healing, and, and all the people are like, I want to be healed too, and so they flock to this imprisoned and marooned Paul on the island of Malta. So many more come to him, and Paul, and, and, and he just starts healing them. He starts continuing the work, even though he's healing himself. And so him, along with this crew that got him here, all stay on Malta for quite some time. But when they leave, they do so with honors from the entire community. And they even leave with enough provisions to get them to their next destination. And it seems that they even get a new boat because theirs is completely trashed. And so it seems that these people in Malta have fallen in love with them and care for all these people imprisoned and otherwise and send them on their way. And so the ship leaves and it sets sail for Rome, where Paul has been trying to get to the emperor all along. And so I wonder what happens to everyone on this boat. Are all the prisoners still there? Do they go to prison? Are they free? Do we know what happens? Did any of them escape like they feared was going to happen in our, our last week's reading? Do, they, do the people that work on the boat, do they have to answer, answer for the cargo they've lost? Are they in trouble for that? We don't know. The, the story kind of just says they go to Rome and Paul continues. There's so much that goes left unanswered. So Paul's story in the book of Acts doesn't go much further than this. This is the final chapter of Acts. He gets to Rome. He somehow gets a house of his own under the watchful eye of the guard who lives with him. But he doesn't live what I would call an imprisoned life. Instead, he continues to teach and preach and heal people that come to him in this house. Paul's mission continues beyond this final gap that he faced. And the craziest thing is we have no idea if he ever meets with the emperor. We have no idea if he faces legal judgment or not. We just don't know what happens because it doesn't tell us. It's like all leading up for him going to the emperor and then Acts ends and we don't know what happens but we know that the work keeps going because we get all these letters of what Paul continues to do. So throughout this series, I've been trying to explore what does it take for us to get through this next gap in life? And at some points it was this current gap of being online and, and all the things we're facing in the pandemic with COVID and, and with masking and, and with trans rights and with abortion rights and with everything happening in Russia and Ukraine, we are just trying to get through this next gap. Sometimes we, we need to believe in ourselves. We've learned that in this series. Sometimes we need help from others, even those we don't expect. Jew, Gentile, Lydia, a, a slave girl named Rhoda. Sometimes we need help to get through these gaps. And sometimes we have to completely let go, release control, and crash like Paul had to do on this shore. But I think if we only look at one gap at a time, it might be a little naive because it's not just one gap we're facing, it seems like one after another, because our life keeps going, our, our missions, as Paul might call it, continue, the work goes on, and though, although we have survived these several gaps recently, in one way or another, we, we have to go through another gap, and we're often met by another gap after that, and then another one on top of that, and yet again, another one after that, so maybe we need to reorient our understanding about gaps. Maybe the work we do now is preparing us for this next gap. And maybe learning how to mind the gaps in all these various ways helps us when we find ourselves in similar spaces. So if we look at life in this manner, we can realize that we are all actually the people of the gaps. And if you look back in the Hebrew scriptures, the, the chosen people of God, the Hebrew people, the name Hebrew, in Hebrew actually comes from the word avar. And this word, when translated, means uh, crossing over or uh, transferring over, moving from one place to another. And so this title, the Hebrew people, is, is written into their DNA. And in fact, we become inheritors of this title whenever the scriptures are passed down to us. And we take part in this lineage all about crossing over, moving forward, enduring, not just surviving, but thriving in these holy liminal spaces, these gaps. Maybe we are meant to be a people designed to face the gaps of life and to walk through them together faithfully. 
And in this time of war and division and dis-ease and a global health scare, maybe we need to be reminded of the work of early Jesus followers, a group of rough and tough people who are trying their hardest to follow God in often scary and dangerous situations, just hoping they would get something right, just one thing right. And often they were relying on their past gap experiences to lead them through the next one. But I'm reminded that these people never did this work alone. And we do not have to do it alone either. Because what a blessing it is to have a community such as ours right here, right now, that it can support us in this gap-filled life. So may we remember that, that this series has taught us a lot. And, and I, I pray that we can remember those things to help us when we find ourselves in the next gap. And I pray that we can lean into one another when we forget how to, to listen to these past stories and past gaps. And I pray that we can learn how to mind the next gap faithfully with one another. Amen. So our blessing today, I, I went to um, a training and we ended the training with this and I thought it was really cool. And since this is our last fully online service, um, I wanna do a blessing where we all bless each other. Um, so if you are able, what we're gonna do is we're gonna type a blessing into the chat. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be long. If you want it to be, you can do that. But what we'll do is we'll all type a blessing into the chat and we won't send yet, we'll wait, and then I'll count down and say three, two, one, and we'll click send and send those out. Does that make sense? I don't know, wait, wait, a blessing, like give Just, me an example. You can say prayers that you have a good week, or um, I hope that you get to do something fun, or I hope you get through this next gap. It can be a hope, a prayer. It can just okay. be a nice word. It can be... It can be anything. And if you don't have anything, that's okay. But we'll, we'll do that and then I'll, I'll read them aloud so we can hear all of, all of them. So take a moment, uh, I'll mute myself so you don't hear me typing. And then I'll um, come back and we can share. Okay, so if you have your blessing type, I'll count down three, two, one, then we'll, we'll send. So three, two, one. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read them out loud so we can hear them and so we can post these on our YouTube video as well. So um, starting with John. So we have blessings to Terry with his mom. Thank Even God. a gap needs a bridge. Be the bridge. Blessings to all for being present to help me and everyone through our gaps. I give a blessing of imperfection. I hope you are released from the expectations of perfection and live fully and imperfectly. Thanks for keeping us healthy and safe. Bless you all. Success this week for any task to which you set your hand and success for any medical issues this week. Blessings for peace and stamina during the gaps. May we find reasons to smile and ways to help in the coming days. Prayers for a jo joyful journey reunion next Sunday. Definitely that one, love that one. Blessings for all of the positive energy in this community through Zoom and elsewhere. Blessings to all, praying for and proud of the Ukrainian people. I hope each of us hears some kind of good news that makes us smile. Blessings for those helping the hurt. That is wonderful. Amen to that. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers. <laughs>